going to need her to take a breath, get some air in her lungs, and then start yelling, not screaming, but yelling as loud as she can for help. Trapped on the fifth floor, screaming, yelling for help. Now at six, a local mother who was saved from the fire that killed one of the city's bravest is talking for the first time about that tragic early morning fire. Good evening. Tonight, family, friends, and brothers of Daryl Gordon are still coming to terms with the loss of someone who they cared for so greatly. Tonight, a message of thanks coming from a young family rescued from that burning apartment building. Not on your side, John Genovese is live in Madisonville with their story. John? Well, Ashley Whitney says she owes her family's life to those firefighters. Even today, this building is still closed off. We can actually still smell the ash from that fire from where we are in the parking lot. We know Daryl Gordon was working five floors up, going door by door, trying to pull people to safety. Five floors up in the King Towers apartment. Unit 57, and she's still inside. Yes, yeah, she's still inside. She's screaming and hollering. Ashley Whitney and her three-month-old son, Kashmir. I'm just screaming bloody murder, just crying, crying, crying. Barely able to breathe. My son crying, coughing. I don't know what to do. I'm going crazy. Screaming from their balcony for help. Okay, I've just been, I've just been told that the heavy rescue squad is on the way to her apartment. When they opened that door, I couldn't see anything. I couldn't even see the fireman's name, face, anything like that. Like, all I could see was just nothing but that yellow outfit on. On the same smoke-filled floor where FAO Daryl Gordon was trying to save people who were trapped. Help arriving for this mother and son. They grabbed my son. The first thing they did, grab my son. One of the firemen took him down. The fireman grabbed me, took me down the steps. Ashley says they were among the last to leave the building. There's no way of knowing if Gordon was their rescuer, but she owes their lives to people like him putting everything on the line. I just want to say to my prayers for him and his family, give my condolences out because if it wasn't for him, I don't think half of us probably would have been able to get out, been out saved, but I'm so gladly that he was able to save our lives. Now, both Ashley and her son were checked out at the hospital and released. We'll have much more from her coming up tonight at 11. In the meantime, several investigations still underway here to figure out exactly what happened. For now, reporting live, John of EC9 on your side. So moving to hear this family's story. Thank you, John. Tonight, thousands of firefighters all over the country are making plans to come to Cincinnati to pay their respects for Gordon saving the lives of others as he did. Tuesday, there will be a visitation from three to 7:30 at the Duke Energy Center. The funeral is scheduled for Wednesday at 10 in the morning at St. Peter and Chains, and the burial will immediately follow at Oak Hill Cemetery. Right now, you can leave your thoughts for the Gordon family on a special section of WCPO.com. Nine on your side will have continuing coverage of the life of Daryl Gordon over the next few days as the city mourns the loss of a man described by so many as great.